I've had the pleasure of spending a lot of time with with uh, listening to your recordings and a couple of your events now. This is my third. Um, and I, I communicate with people that communicate with angels and non-physical beings and have that's become a part of my awareness as well. And I guess part of my, my hope and intent this morning was to help people aware, become aware that those same opportunities exist within us. And so whether we're here experiencing it with you in physical form or what appears to be physical form, or whether we're quiet in a quiet place at home or sitting outside in the woods, we can literally have communications in our hearts, in our minds with, with precious, beautiful, non-being, non-physical beings that, that love us more than we know that are there. And, and those, those thoughts, those feelings, the messages that we're sharing and receiving are as real as they are in physical form. There are a number of things that we want to say to you because y- you understand that it is your perception that we are talking about. Mm-hmm. That just because you're not perceiving it, anyone is not perceiving it, doesn't mean that it is not there to be perceived. And perception is just like tuning a radio dial. The signal's there. You just got to tune into the frequency of it. So we liked your words as you were talking about the oneness. That usually sets people sort of out of sorts a little bit because it's clear that you are individually sitting on these chairs. Clump, 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 clump. <laughs> and, and it's clear that you've come with different intentions, that there is a variety. In other words, in that, in this oneness, there is variety that adds to the perpetuation, to the eternalness of the whole, because it's in those different characteristics that new ideas are, are born. And so the difference really is what allows and is the reason for expansion. So we don't want to become too same because expansion then would not be as satisfying as it is. When you are, as in your example, out in the woods and enjoying the beauty of what's there, there's something so essential that we want to impart to you and we think this is the perfect time to do it. Esther has been exploring her relationship, not only with us, but with Jerry from his non-physical perspective. And she's having such a real experience with him that from time to time, as she contemplates what the things she's living and the things that we are repeating about what she is living, how they would feel to the world at large who is on a different frequency who would be saying things to Esther like, you need to just let go, girl, and get a grip. (laughs) And Esther says to this imaginary friend who she occasionally hears say that to her, I have no intention of ever doing that because this is what Abraham's message has always been about. It's always been about helping, helping us to understand our relationship with this whole picture. So the other day she was sitting overlooking her swimming pool in Texas and looking out into the beautiful trees that were on the other side of it and contemplating some ideas that felt new to her, new and exciting, new and breathtakingly exciting. And as she focused upon them and felt us reveling with her in the new idea, the trees began applauding. Now, what that means in literal terms is there are a bunch of critters that Esther doesn't even know what they're called who rub their legs together and make a racket. And there must be a million of them because of the volume that they produce. And she'd been sitting there for hours. She'd been working on the book. She had been editing some recordings. She'd been out there all morning and had not heard a peep from any of them until she found this new thought And they all applauded (laughs) in unison. And Esther thought, nobody's ever going to convince me that this isn't non-physical orchestrating something that pleases me in order to help me feel that we're all in this togetherness of all of that. And it's interesting because here is Esther, a sophisticated human, living in a very expansive life on top of the world in all regards, participating with non-physical, which is the, the broadest other end of the spectrum, and communicating also with insects in the same moment. We are all in this together. 
-hmm. In other words, there is a knowledge that is available and everyone is getting from it whatever they are needing from wherever they are and it's perfect, you see. She liked that. She liked it a lot. In fact, she sat there for quite a while and tried to get them to do it again and they wouldn't. <laughs> it was time for a new thought, apparently. We only applaud when something good happens. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they were non-responsive to her request. And so more day passed and she was thinking and speaking to someone about how much she enjoys her absolute knowing that Jerry is aware of her all the time. And then she went on to say how much she likes it when there is physical evidence of that. And there's a part of her that doesn't want to ask for the physical evidence because it's a little lack-based. Mm -hmm. And a part of her that wants to ask for it because it's very much fun. So that was right where she was resting in the thought. So she got in the car, opened the garage door from the button on the wall, backed out. She'd been in and out of the garage two or three times that morning already with the car. Backed out pushed the button on her visor to make the garage door go down, and it went down partway and went back up, like it does if something's blocking the sensor. She said, Jerry, get out of the way. <laughs> I know it's you. Pushed it again. It went down a little bit, went back up. So she got out, sort of waved her blouse in the airway. Get in the car and come with me, she says. She's playing with him because she knows he's wherever she is. But she knew for sure that he was standing there with his energy and that it was keeping the garage door from closing. Now, Esther knows that much of the world would just think she's nuts. But there's no reason for the door to open and close and then open and not close. In other words, there was nothing obstructing it other than energy that she had asked for. So it was a sort of, do any of you see auras? Do you see the energy around Esther here? Can you see Jerry? Can you? If you can't, it's because you're unworthy beings. No. <laughs> that was Jerry. <laughs> so... So you get to decide how you play with this. In other words, the thing that the message that we most want our physical friends to hear about this subject, and it is not bigger and not smaller than this simple understanding. We want you to understand the all in this togetherness of it, as you so powerfully presented here as we began. But we want you to understand the continuity that we are all about. You have a certain continuity that you understand as you are born into this physical body and then you leave and someone else comes. In other words, there are these generations that come and you pass your knowledge, your beliefs, your expectation. You provide a basis for the next generation. You leave infrastructures. You leave buildings. In other words, each generation that shows up doesn't have to start all over in figuring out how to get water and food to the masses. In other words, you have that continuity. But there's a continuity that most humans don't know about, overlook, or can't believe. And that is that everyone who has been before is non-physically focused and still focused forward with you here and now. And that what you are interested in right now while you are in your physical bodies, once you make your reemergence into non-physical, your interest will still be keenly there. In other words, that is the continuity that we really want you to understand. And so if you have interest in someone or something, in some movement, in some music, in some literature, in some, in something, if you have interest in some person who has been in physical form, you have access not to who they were when they were in their physical body because they have reemerged and left all resistance behind, but you have access to their current interest in the world in which you are living. And while their current interest is often tied to what their interest was then, because the masters who have walked your planet have always found a way to tap into that. And so in many regards, we're living the fullness of who they are while they were in their physical bodies. It's why you're still thinking about them. It's why you are still thinking about them. 
But you have access not only to what they had concluded at the time of their physical departure, you have access to what they now know as a result. And this is the most important thing. When you find vibrational frequency that matches that, you have access to their thoughts. And when you come to the awareness of what they're thinking, it's like tapping into that mastermind. As you have access to that thought that they are thinking, and it ripples through you to enhance the experience that you are living, that rippling feeling is their awareness, their satisfaction in your co-creation, in assisting them in taking it further still. It isn't that we need you in order for us to think, but when our thoughts, ours and yours, are focused into this physical environment that has this potential of manifesting, this potential of demonstration, actualization, realization, manifestation. That is the leading edge of thought. We don't want you to ever let go of the knowing that when you create here in this physical form, that it is the leading edge, the most expanded edge of creation. And we're all in on it. You're not here alone. We love you so much, but you have not figured out how to scrape dirt together and launch it into orbit for another planet or even a moon. You're not, you need us. In other words, we are all in this together and we need you. And we do not use need in the needy sense. We use it in the sense that we are all in this together. And you're not ever going to be whole until you know that, embrace it and experience it and participate in it, you see. And we are always whole because there are enough of you that are allowing this. But why not you? Why not now? Why not more? Why not more feeling your power? It's a nice thing to demonstrate your power, your empowerment, your knowledge, your alignment, your invincibility, your reason for being. It's a nice thing to say. So yes to everything you said. Is there something more? Just want to add something to it. What I'm hearing you say is that as we live our life every day, in addition to looking at the, what I'll call small details of what's happening in our life. And we call them big details, essential details, reason to focus details, what life is all about details. Understood. At the same time, though, we can step back and almost observe our lives and at the same time connect with our non-physical friends, our higher self. and, and You can, but you know, as soon as you step back and tap in to who we are, you get focused right back into the fullness of who you are because that's where we want to look. Agreed. And yet it helps us raise our perspective from sometimes being a victim to empowering us to, oh, that's right. I get to choose in this well, moment. You're right. You got to step back and you got to feel good in order to, because when you feel a victim, you haven't stepped back. You don't feel good and you're not part of us. In other words, you can step in to what we know about you or you can step away from what we know about you. And the way you feel is your indicator of which you've done. Agreed. And thank you. One more thing we want to say, and that is that sometimes, in fact, often, usually mostly, the human vantage point has been, it's changing. In my human form, I'm here to prove something to something greater than me. And we say there isn't anything greater than you. But you can pinch yourself off from your greatness, and then that's when you say that stuff. But when you understand that you're not proving anything to anyone because no one's testing you or challenging you and you relax in to the fullness of who you are by trying to get on that high flying disc until you get there and owning it. It isn't until that feeling of invincibility and that feeling of empowerment and that feeling of steady love and that feeling of upliftment is yours that you can really, 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 we know you're getting it conceptually. Well, you've practiced this for 30 or 60 days and you're really going to understand it. The, the difference between the word clarity and the word confusion, you understand. But the difference between the feeling of clarity and the feeling of confusion is, oh, so worth demonstrating to yourself, you see. And you haven't been clear until you have infinite intelligence focused with you moment by moment. That's clarity, you see. And anything less than that is just screwy. Yeah, yeah, really good. Thank you. Yeah.